G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing this AFL off-season series. I'm doing, going through each individual team in the AFL, doing a bit of a profile on where they're at, uh, trying to have a crack at their best 22, look at their list, uh, their ins and outs, and potentially as well, a bit of a look at how 2024 might go for them. So in today's video, we are doing the North Melbourne Football Club. Yeah, there seems to be a bit of a sentiment out there that I hate North Melbourne or something like that. Uh, it's definitely not true. And uh, that was one of the teams I was more interested in having a look at to see what their 22 would shape up as because there's been a bit of a clean out there, it has to be said. Um, obviously, been rebuilding for a few years. But this offseason in, in particular, we saw a lot of experience leave the list. Obviously, a whole heap of draft picks coming into the into the club. And then um, for the second year in a row, added some mature talent as well. So if you haven't seen so far, I have uh, done this in reverse order of the AFL alphabetically, meaning I started with the Western Bulldogs. I've done the Eagles, done the Swans, the Saints, Richmond. Uh, I've done Port Adelaide now as well. Today is North Melbourne, um, which means the next one, I think, is the Melbourne Football Club. So there is a playlist created on the channel if you want to go find that content. Otherwise, you can just look in the last handful of uploads I've done. They've all been coming out in the last few days. So today, like I said, we're going to do North Melbourne. And if you could do me a favor before I start, if you could subscribe, that'd be great. Cool. So with North Melbourne, obviously, um, expectations were maybe not high going into this season uh, of 2023, that is, because uh, they had just come off a wooden spoon year and uh, them and West Coast in 23 were obviously a fair way off the rest of the competition. So with a new coach and Alistair Clarkson, uh, there was a bit of potential rejuvenation there and a bit of optimism around what they could achieve uh, in their first season under Clarkson. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't really pan out that way. And I will obviously highlight the fact that Clarkson spent a fair bit of time away from the football club. So um, that one was a little bit of adversity, which was unfortunate for them. But when you just look at the outcome of the season, they avoided the spoon, they improved their percentage, and they had an extra win. Sure, that looks like progress, but it didn't. there wasn't a lot of progress, to be honest, in terms of you know some... Games where North Melbourne looked a little bit listless and uncompetitive. But the point of this video is not to uh, harp on about what went wrong for North Melbourne. Uh, it's, a, it's more of a look at where they're at. And there were some good signs that come out of 2023. The biggest, well, actually, I was going to say the biggest one. There's a couple of big ones. Uh, first of all, Nick Larkey won an All-Australian jumper for a 71-goal season, I think. And when you consider, you know, just how much worse North Melbourne were from the third worst team this year, that's a remarkable achievement, which I've, uh, I've commented on a fair bit in this offseason. So Nick Larkey, the emergence of him is an absolute star. Uh, and then also the emergence of Harry Sheasel, of course, as well, uh, winning the Rising Star. He was uh, deployed in a bit of a half-back role this year and impacted the game a lot, won their best and fairest. And I'd even say George Wardlaw, what we saw from him in a short space of time before he got injured, there's, there's genuine excitement there. To end the season the way Taron Thomas did as well, I mean, there's some reason to believe that there's a, there's a genuine nucleus of players there who could take North Melbourne to the next level. So before I have a crack at their 22 and, and analysing it, uh, let's talk about the players that made way for North Melbourne this year, the players that left the list. Uh, and there was 12 of them. So this is a big clean out. So you had the retirements of Cunnington, Zebel, Goldstein left, Ben Mackay left through free agency, Aaron Hall retired, Daniel Howe, Jacob Edwards, Kane Turner, Jack Marnie, Flynn Perez, Phoenix Spicer, and Lockie Young. So that's a, that's a massive clean out of the list. That is all, over 25% of the list gone in one off season and a lot of games experience there. Will it affect their best 22? A little bit. Um, you know, Cunnington and Zebel were probably, you know, the back end of their careers, as was Goldstein. Ben Mackay also probably didn't have the most impactful season. Uh, it is a lot of experience. Same thing with Aaron Hall there. That being said, you know, in terms of plotting their 22, I don't know how much they've lost, but certainly from a depth point of view, that's a big loss. But let's talk about who they got into the club. We had Zach Fisher and Dylan Stevens arrive through trades via uh, Carlton and the Sydney Swans, respectively. They traded for Big Owen Yuan, or Biggie as they call him, uh, the Richmond key defender who I don't think has played a game. I could be wrong, but either way, he's, a, he's going to be a bit of a prospect uh, depth player as a key position defender. Then they had some high profile draft picks, obviously, with Colby McKercher, Zane Dersma, Taylor Goad, Will Dawson, and then Riley Hardiman. So a lot going out, a lot coming in. Uh, five first round draft picks, even though the last pick I think became 23, something like that. Uh, but still, some really good access to talents. Can't fault them on, on who they've selected. I think they've got a really good mix of players, as I've talked about in previous videos. And, uh, you know, over the years, probably maybe a look at key positional uh, talent uh, or a greater focus on that would have served them well. But uh, in terms of this off season, there's no doubt some top end talent has made it onto the list. So now I'm gonna have a crack at trying to look at what their best 22 would look like when you consider all those outs to the list. Uh, it goes a little something like this. Uh, there's five players there that I've highlighted in yellow. 
that are new to the list. So Toby Pink, I've picked as a you know third key position defender back there. Combin sounds like he's going to be playing as a key defensive option this year, and we know Aiden Kaur is already back there. So straight off the bat, that back line is a... Uh, it's not the strongest backline, in particular the, the talls. But what we do have is Zach Fisher coming in and deploying him in a halfback role, I think makes sense. The, the Roos need a bit of outside class, running carry and rebounds. And I do think this is just personal opinion, but you'll notice I didn't put Harry Sheasel on the back line. I have no idea as to what their uh, intention is with Harry Sheasel this year. My personal opinion is that the, the halfback experiment worked great. Uh, certainly built up a profile for him, got his confidence up. He's super impactful, but I think as a forward half player, if you're an equally talented forward half player to a back half player, play him in the forward half is what I reckon. So I think forward midfielder is the projection or, or the development pathway that I think Sheasel goes down. Whether that's this, this year or not, I'm not too sure. Uh, but we've got another genuine wingman there in Dylan Stevens. Uh, partnering up with Bailey Scott on the other wing. Bailey Scott had a great season this year. Uh, the on-ball division, I think, is really strong, although it is young. So there's LDU, who is a top liner on talent, uh, but obviously just needs to get his body right. Taron Thomas, we saw a really strong back end of the season. If he can replicate that for a full season, uh, North Melbourne will be a much better team. And George Wardlaw, I selected there just because of the, the raw talent the guy's got. But again, like LDU, it is a little bit dependent on his uh, injury ness, his availability through injury. Then the forward line was an interesting one. So I like to usually pick two talls and maybe a third tall option, maybe one that can ruck, but I've actually decided to go for a short forward line here for North Melbourne, purely because I think that's the way you cram a lot of their best players in. How they actually structure up on game day might look a little bit different, but I have selected Coleman Jones on their bench as the secondary ruck because I think Rawlings uh, mentioned it recently that he said that Coleman Jones is probably going to be doing a bit more rucking. So uh, the forward line, though, it has to be said, is talented. You know, I've talked about Paul Curtis uh, in my underrated guns of the young guns of the comp, um, in that I think he's actually a pretty good small forward there or medium forward. Larky obviously is the sole key forward target there. Stevenson had a productive year last year. Zerha is uh, obviously a, one of the first forwards picked in this team. Very, very talented. And then I've, I've worked Sheasel in there as well as more of a forward midfielder, which meant Powell's on the bench. Simkin is um, midfield depth. I think there's a chance that he gets pushed aside by some of those better midfielders this year. And Will Phillips obviously makes this team as well. Now, I have picked the two young guns in Dersma and McKercher. I just think they're both too good to leave out and both with their attributes, will be able to impact early. McKercher as an impact sub is nice. I like that. I think there's a chance that he pushes out Dylan Stevens at some point this year. Uh, I'm not trying to write Dylan Stevens off. I just think McKercher strikes me as a sort of player who would genuinely be a rising star shout. And Zane Dersmer as well, as a pure like lead up and mark forward, I think he has the game to be able to play early. I could be wrong on that. You might slot Eddie Ford or something like that into this team. I will also highlight that I didn't select Griffin Logan, their best 22, purely because he's got an ACL uh, situation at the moment. So um, obviously that back six looks a little bit stronger with Griffin Logan available. Uh, so in terms of other players that I left out, I'll highlight a couple of mature players. There's uh, Hugh Greenwood that I didn't pick, Darcy Tucker I didn't pick, Liam Shields, Josh Gota. Um, Eddie Ford was an unlucky one. I think someone like a Braden George could come into this side throughout the year. Curtis Taylor again as well. Again, I like I like Taylor. It's just he was the one that came, that was spat out when I picked the preferred forward options. But maybe North fans will have a different opinion. Josh Goda was another one who played a bit of football this year that I just couldn't cram in with the addition of you know five new players into this best 22. A couple of got pushed out. Then there's a couple of the key defensive backup options in uh, Callan Dawson and Biggie Nguyen again. It's just the depth is very unproven there. So I think that's arguably the biggest concern here for North Melbourne in terms of a round one ready team is that the, the tall defensive options there I would have liked to have seen maybe an investment in more of, in more of a mature ready-made uh, option rather than getting a couple of speculative ones in pink and new on. But maybe Toby Pink, he is relatively mature. Um, he's not he's not an eighteen year old or anything like that. But uh, in terms of AFL exposure, that's their vulnerability, I think. So there's that. Plus, you know, the other key forward option, I'm not really sure, sure what that looks like. Could Dersma grow a little bit and be a bit of an undersized key forward? In which case, you know, he might actually find it tougher going if he's absorbing the, the second tall defender in a given team. But to look at their ongoing needs, you know, I know they drafted a key position defender and a young ruckman in this year's draft. My concern, I guess, going forward for North Melbourne is while the talent there is undeniable, in the midfield in particular, uh, and the forward line options, particularly mid-size forwards, uh, the concern, I think, is just the delayed reaction to getting key position talent onto the list. They did take Go, they did take Dawson, and they did take Pink and Nuance. So they're trying to correct that a little bit. 
There's no doubt. But my concern here is with North's future premiership window, will the mids all develop well before the talls? That's entirely possible here. So uh, the, I would actually maybe look at uh, at the end of this year, depending on how it goes. Like they could unearth, you know, Toby Pink as um, another Alex Carey who comes in and uh, is surprisingly good. But they might be in a position to say get Tom Cleary or Dougal Howard prize them loose of a club if they're not getting games at their respective club just for a few years to let some other players like a Will Dawson for instance develop so that's my analysis of the best 22 it's going to be quite a different looking 22 and uh, you know there's a lot of evenly ranked players here as well in which we're all probably going to have different opinions and I do acknowledge that uh, my opinions are probably not as strong as some of the more switched on North Melbourne fans of course regarding their best 22 so but I've just had a crack um, I do think, obviously, depth is going to be a little bit of an issue this year as well. When you when you clean out 12 players in one hit, I think that's something you just have to embrace. But the talent coming in is there, and I do believe that Clarkson is the sort of coach who would be able to steady the ship here with North Melbourne and ensure that this rebuild goes right. So in terms of outlook for 2024, I think we're probably looking at an improved North Melbourne. Um, I think particularly if, if Clarkson gets some time to really get stuck in there and build a bit of momentum there, I think we could be looking at a five or six win season. And I think when you consider five wins over two years is what North Melbourne has produced, five or six wins in one year would be a certain step in the right direction. Considering as well, you know, their, their off-season moves have been towards youth. They're still, they're still developing that list. They're still building the layers of depth there. You know, had they gone out and recruited, um, you know, Jordan Degoe this offseason, I would have said their expectations would probably be in line with a club trying to make finals. But obviously the, their approach here, their list management mindset here, is still clearly geared towards this is going to take a little while as a project. I still think they will improve and I don't think they'll win the wooden spoon. Five or six wins is probably the upper end of what I'd be expecting uh, just because it is still quite a young list and a lot of new players playing together in the one hit. So we'll see what happens. That's my take on North Melbourne. I, I still think they'll be in the bottom four. Uh, five or six wins to see some improvement. They've got some genuine young guns on their list. There's absolutely no denying it. And I've made the comment before, you contrast it with like a West Coast, the other team that was the worst in the last two years, is that they've kind of been accumulating talent a little bit longer. And you feel like, other than maybe a key position defender that's somewhat ready-made, I don't know if there's any more clear list needs in terms of their future 22 that North Melbourne are looking for. Therefore, I think that the talent is there. It's time to develop them. It's time to push up the ladder. So it be interesting to see what happens with North. They're going to be fascinating, particularly under Clarkson, I think. This side with the Clarkson factor makes it all the more intriguing and you still have this sense that you know it could click on any given day. But we'll see, it's been a while. North fans probably do deserve some success. They've uh, they've had to be patient over the last few years, but that's my take on the team, guys. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. Like I said, I'm moving through the teams reverse alphabetically. So next I'll do Melbourne, uh, and then uh, I think the Hawks after that, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in those videos. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.